I can tell you a couple of plans that I, I have for the state of Kentucky. Uh, I'd appreciate if I get that opportunity. I'm yep. sitting up here with a couple of uh, a couple of movers and shakers in the, the uh, in the the prospect of uh, medical marijuana and marijuana to people. I said early on that I wanted to uh, make marijuana legal, but I, I don't want to make marijuana legal because eight-year-olds can stand on the street corner and eat a tomato, and that's legal. I don't want that. I want some sort of uh, people ought to be able to grow their own. Uh, and be regulated by families. If there's any problem with it, bring in social services instead of the cops. Uh, you know, if uh, and only that under probable cause. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> if it's going to be commerce in it, the government has the right to license and or tax. They just have that right. I mean, that's commerce. Uh, they do the same thing with widgets. So, uh, you know, but I want that money. I don't want it going over to the corporations. I don't want Friday night sales. I don't want golden arches. I don't want clearance sales. I don't want any advertising encouraging its use. That's not what we're out here for. You know, at the same time, I'd like to see the money that's generated back go back to the dealers, the people who are dealing now. They're some of the best minds of this generation. They're running a billion dollar <laughs> business without a shred of paperwork. You know, I think that they ought to, I think it ought to stay in the hands of the people who are putting it out now. But uh, I'm also going to uh, put it in the hands of all the sick and dying Kentuckians. I want to uh, take it out of the hands of the teenagers and put it over to the hands of the people in the old age homes. I mean, it would put a uh, smile on their face, it would increase their appetite, and think about the increased visitation by the young folks. Hey, let's go see Dad. You know, the, uh, uh, want to, uh, I want to educate the people, the kids in the state of Kentucky, and I have plans for doing that. Um, I'm out here uh, to see if I can raise any money. It, uh, I am a criminal defense attorney. I can also for hire uh, any lottery winners out there who need a little consultation. Um, there is no limit. There is a limit on a thousand dollar contribution in my race for governor, but there is no limit on a gov on, a, on an attorney's <laughs> fee. So um, anybody who needs any special consultation, I'm the man to do it with. Um, Money is probably going to be the biggest issue in this race. We, we probably need to raise about a half million bucks. We're at 140,000 right now. As our numbers begin to climb, I think the money will start to come in. But uh, this early money is the most important. So um, I've got envelopes down here um, that if you want to make a contribution, you can take this envelope and fill it out and either mail it to us or give it back to me here tonight. They're in the box over there. I have uh, our handouts. This is our push package. Uh, this is uh, me and my running mate, uh, who is uh, who. <laughs> I had some people complain that, about a woman as a running mate, and I said, "You're just jealous because she can outride, outshoot, and outfish every one of you," and uh, and she can. So uh, you know, she's quite a lady. And uh, then I have this with me this evening. This is my autobiography. It's called The Last Free Man in America Meets the Synthetic Subversion. It is the story of uh, 40 years of work on my behalf to try to find out just what went wrong with America. Wow. What, what went wrong with, uh, with the concept of individual sovereignty. And the name of the book is The Last Free Man in America Meets the Synthetic Subversion. And that's what went wrong. That, uh, that we were an agrarian society, we produced it all from the land, we discovered the plant that was the answer to all our most basic needs, probably with fuel, medicine, and food. And then they discovered petroleum, and they discovered all the synthetic processes that could be done to extract products from petroleum. And they decided to take the farmer out of competition with them, not only in the petrochemical, but the pharmaceutical and medicinal aspect. <coughs> And so now a great number of our problems are uh, dealt with because both the major parties that were set up to protect us, uh, both on a national and local level, had been bought off with the special interest money, extraordinary special interest money from the people that I call the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite, son of a bitches. Got the one, to it. The yeah. ones who have never said the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America or to the Republic for which it stands 
and the ones who view the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as impediments to the implementation of a new world order and global economy. And that, that's just where it's at. These people have bought off the people who are supposed to be protecting us. They're trying to dismantle the Constitution and our rights just as fast as they can. Well, they ran into a hard road to hoe in the state of Kentucky if I get to be governor. And I recognize them for who they are, them guys. And I ain't gonna let them guys take over and make a mockery out of the sacrifices of all the dads and granddads who hit the beaches at Normandy and Iwo Jima so that you wouldn't have to be in a cup to hold a job in America. So we're going to rediscover uh, whether people, in fact, those people died uh, in vain. Every generation must rewin its own freedoms. That's what it says here in this little cloud on the front of the book. You know, all the sacrifices that anybody in the past up until the last second of my talking to you don't count anymore. It's what you're willing to do from this second forward that's going to decide whether we still have any freedoms to America. The reason I became a champion of marijuana is because I was asthmatic all my life. And uh, I uh, was uh, in and out of the hospital on many occasions. I was 4F for the Army. I made the Marines take me by getting a couple of doctors to say I had outgrown it. I was on Paris Island for six weeks, and somebody pitched some dust in my face, and I went into an asthmatic attack. I was discharged from Paris Island, the Marines. I was 19 years old. I didn't know marijuana cured asthma. A friend of mine came back from Bangkok, Thailand with some Thai weed and said, Gatewood, try this. And I said, isn't that dangerous? And he says, it'll help you. He had to become a doctor, so I trusted him. I smoked marijuana the first time, just like that. It cured my asthma, just like that. For someone who's gone through a lifetime of 21 years, being totally afraid that at any moment their lungs are going to close up on them, let me tell you, that creates a lot of free-floating anxiety. And, uh, you know, a lot of fear. Marijuana cured it just like that. Because I tell you what, marijuana is a gateway drug. Marijuana is the gateway to existentialism. When you discover that there's more than one reality, when you discover that it is no just one way of looking at things, there are things called perspectives and you discover that you have the widest range of choices you ever imagined you have because you now understand there's a second way of looking at everything. You just doubled or tripled or quadrupled the way you can look at things. It's damned entertaining trying to figure out which one has anything to do with reality. That's what makes it such a, a wonderful thing. It just alters your perspective. So does getting up and uh, going looking out the window, getting off the couch. So does thinking. 